Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about Luna and what some of our indicators make of its recent price action. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. I want to start our discussion by talking about the upside downside potential indicator. This is a risk model that we have here at Upside Down Data. Essentially, it's trying to quantify these low risk points, these green zones in Luna's price history. We're accumulating um, Luna has been advantageous, as well as these higher risk zones where distributing Luna has been advantageous. The so scores that are higher mean higher risk and lower mean lower risk. And the price action here is just color coded based on the output. Showing you the long term version of the UDPI. So this is reactive to moves that play out over months. It's a bit more of a macro focus that it has. And you'll notice that it does a good job of identifying these high risk zones where corrections are likely or where kind of sideways action follows before moves back to the upside, dipping into green recently, pushing back up to form this new all time high. Now, the last time that we talked about Luna was actually right when we were starting to put in, you know, this move to the upside back here. And then off to the races we had gone, putting up a new all time high off of this, you know, dipping down to the green, going up here into the orange. But I think what everyone has in mind with Luna right now, or the questions everyone is asking is, you know, Luna has been able to kind of defy gravity for a while now in these bearish conditions. You know, Luna has continued to just push up, be able to set in new all-time highs in market conditions that have been very bearish. You know, Bitcoin has not been doing well in the same time. While Luna has been in an uptrend, Bitcoin has very much been moving down in that time. Really, Bitcoin's been moving down ever since November, whereas Luna has actually been pushing up over that time. And so Luna is kind of one of those interesting outliers. And I think the question everyone has is, will Luna be able to continue that type of behavior? Or might this drawdown we're seeing right now be different? So I want to show a different view of the UDPI, the upside downside potential indicator. So I'm just showing you the raw output of the model across time. So UDPI level on the y-axis and then just time on the x-axis here. And so we can see a little bit more clearly what the UDPI has been doing. So with that drawdown that we had kind of more recently, um, kind of in, in uh, January to February of uh, this year, 2022, we went down back into the negatives. You know, we got down to around negative 1.6-ish before moving back up to put in that all-time high. And now we're, you know, we're in the positives, right? We're above one. And this is notable because Luna is one of the few assets that we're monitoring right now that's really up at these risk levels on the long-term UDPI, kind of this more longer time horizon um, oriented view of the UDPI. And so I think one of the things that needs to be a little bit concerning is that it is an outlier from that perspective. And so if it was going to correct further from here, that would be totally plausible from the model's perspective. You know, there's more downside than upside potential that's realistic. So certainly it correcting further on this correction here would be very reasonable from the long term UDPI's perspective. And if we look at the other time frames of the UDPI as well, the medium term and the short term, they also think that downside is plausible, right? The medium term is up at around one, a little bit below. Short term is more undecided, just slightly below zero, actually. But either one of these could certainly, the downside potential could be realistic if Luna were to continue the fall. Now, obviously, when you're looking at these, you could say, you know, but what about the upside? I mean, there is still plenty of upside potential that's realistic across all the time frames, And that's absolutely true. You know, should Luna be able to maintain this bullish um, footing? I think there's some other factors to consider that, in my personal opinion, make me think the downside is a little bit more plausible from here than the upside. Again, just my opinion. Um, if you have other thoughts, I'd love to hear them in the comments. But this is my current outlook is that, you know, in at least the short term, either way is equally plausible. And then in the, the longer term preferred time frames, the downside is more plausible. And I personally think that it's probably more likely we would go down into some of these levels first before Luna would be able to push back to the upside. And one of the indicators I'm looking at that's making me think that downside might be plausible from here, continued downside might be plausible from here, is the trend confidence indicator for Luna. And so this is a model that basically um, helps us identify how healthy an uptrend or a downtrend is or how confident we should be in that trend continuing. So the, the way that you read this is that if you're above zero, that's kind of a bullish disposition. If you're below zero, that's a negative disposition. The idea is that if you're in an uptrend and the, the TCI is green, then that's suggesting that that um, uptrend has legs and it can likely continue. And we saw that, for example, back here in this big run going up to the spring of 21. You see the TCI flash green 
kind of right at the the origin um, of this uptrend here flashes green and then indeed that catalyzed or you know that led to this huge move to the upside that we we see it's kind of this early warning sign that luna was likely to be able to put up this massive move to the upside but then it quickly flipped, flipped red you know pretty much right at the top of that uptrend it flipped red suggesting that that uptrend was likely over and indeed then we just saw this downtrend leading into the capitulation going into the summer and then again it flipped up early in the summer leading into this huge uptrend here and then kind of has been flip-flopping between red and green the idea being that kind of coming off of this these kind of uptrends that's gone into haven't been entirely convincing because indeed then we just tend to have these corrections going back down same thing here we kind of flips green right around here going up but now we're kind of coming back down and it's flipped red kind of up and around this area um, and been closing red for a while and one of the things with the tci um across luna but across frankly a bunch of different assets that we look at this for so for bitcoin for example when you close red with the tci and you do that for a couple consecutive days that tends to be quite bearish there tends to be continuation to the downside when you first start to flip red right you can see that happening where you flip red more downside happens flip red here a ton more downside happens um etc and so this can be a warning sign and suggest that we've lost kind of a critical level for um luna and that maybe some more downside is likely before we catch a bottom and this i think kind of maps on well also with just some other technical indicators we can look at so moving over to trading view here to show just the price action of luna this is on the daily chart and i just want to look at the amount of volume that's been transacted at different price levels so that's what's, what i'm showing you here is in this visible range where has what's the distribution of volume that's transpired across this range what we can see is that where we are right now it's relatively low amount of volume has transpired at these ranges especially compared to what we observe going down into these lower price levels back through here and so from this perspective really in my view i think the earliest place we could hope to catch support um or or would be most looking to catch support if this downtrend continues might be in kind of the 60 dollars range we can see this notable uptick in these kind of ranges here but really ultimately if if luna keeps dropping and i think this will probably be dependent a little bit on the broader ma um, market conditions i think if the crypto market turns really bullish or excuse me really bearish or just kind of continues to chop around i think we could see a bleed down or a correction further into luna that might actually lead us into these ranges down here where we see most of the volume having transpired which might mean that there are a number of people who have their cost bases around this point where they might step in to try to defend it probably the case that not a ton of people have their cost bases right up around here given how kind of little tr volume has transpired up here now quickly we've we've moved up and then out of those price ranges in the past so that's something that i'm going to be watching closely and you know it's no guarantee but certainly if the moder if excuse me if the market were to turn bearish i would think that a correction of you know another 13 percent but then going down to 30 percent or even even lower could be in the cards if the broader market conditions are bearish but on the flip side if the market flips bullish from here if bitcoin's able to kind of break out of its range push back to the upside you know maybe a broader macro conditions start looking a little bit more favorable then you know there would be no reason that luna would have to go down to these levels again you know once you re-enter a, a bull market you know valuations can go back up and price discovery could be possible again but i think we shouldn't discount the possibility of this downside and certainly just looking at it you know the places that just stand out just looking at this chart is really in this range down here to be able to catch support you know maybe having to re uh revisit some of these levels where we kind of spent a lot of time consolidating could make sense before any kind of move back to the upside now again that's just my interpretation obviously you're um able to to form your own opinions about these data and form your own conclusions and if you have different conclusions again i'd love to hear about it in the comments and just to talk more from a narrative perspective about why I it makes sense to me to some degree for Luna to correct more is that I think one in my opinion one of the things that's been pushing Luna up so much while the market's been so bearish is that Luna had, Luna had been a little bit unique in some ways in just its um its positioning in the market you know Luna really its main selling point it's what it's known for is its UST stablecoin the stablecoin that's native to Luna and that relationship between Luna and UST, you know, to mint you new, new UST, you can burn Luna. And so that's how kind of the market cap of UST grows is by burning Luna. And of course, with UST, you can earn 
you know, around 20% yield on Anchor Protocol on the Terra, Terra blockchain. And I think this was something that had, has been very popular. And we've seen that with the total value locked on Luna as well, really exploding, that in these bearish market conditions, people want to be holding stable coins. And if you're holding stable coins, you might as well be earning yield on them. And if you're going to earn yield on them, might as well look for places where you can earn a pretty decent yield. Anchor Protocol was, uh, was seen as a relatively, you know, stable way of doing that. And so I think a lot of money flocked into Terra to take advantage of that opportunity. And, and really, you know, Terra had been somewhat unique. Now, obviously, in other areas of DeFi, you can enter into stablecoin liquidity pools, et cetera, to earn yield. But really, Anchor was the kind of the standout as being one of the higher uh, and more popular kind of um, ways of earning yield on stablecoins. And one of the reasons why I think that, you know, the narrative might be shifting for Luna is that Luna is, is potentially going to start getting more competition in the stablecoin space. You know, one, one of the stories of the rumors that's come out is that we know that on the near protocol, they're planning on launching, launching, excuse me, their own uh, stable coin called USN. And there are rumors that a protocol similar to Anchor Protocol is going to be launched on near as well, offering a similar amount of APY. And so really what that would suggest is that it's just going to be competing with UST. And so if that draws, pulls some of the liquidity out of UST, either because people like the that protocol more, maybe they think it's more secure, or they believe in the, the peg of USN more than they believe in UST, or people just simply wanting to diversify where they have their stable coins locked, that could lead to some exodus of liquidity from Luna that could be concerning and that could hurt the price as well. And so... Obviously, that's just speculation at this point. It's not still not even confirmed if the USN is going to be released or, or what effect it could have if that did happen. But certainly with kind of Luna riding that narrative for so long, oftentimes with crypto, you can only do that for so long before there's some pullback, right? It's unlikely that one narrative is going to push you all the way up. And to the degree that UST and some of that utility in these bearish conditions has been the narrative pushing Luna up these past months, it makes sense for us to kind of have to revert back to the mean some degree. Now, again, that's just my perspective, but those are some of the things I'm thinking about more kind of on the narrative, slightly fundamental perspective, where a pullback would be very plausible to me for Luna from these levels. But again, not financial advice. You should form your own opinions based on the data that you're seeing. That's just what I'm seeing. And, you know, I just want to give my honest outlook on the Luna market. All right. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter. And remember, uh, with a data-driven approach, in my opinion, that's the best way to navigate these markets.